apostles and elders, a great millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you, Akiyam. Out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth. This is Brother Ariella. Just want to do a quick response to um, uh, the One Body in Yahweh Shah video that, you know, is circulating. Um, I think I think my biggest thing is um, it's shocking that people listen to this stuff and soak it in, you know. And um, it's sad that people are so easily um, duped in a way. Um, now, I, you know, brothers have been doing videos on this. I've been watching some of this video. It was a particular part where they're talking about the Herodian dynasty and the rise of Julius Caesar, something that us here at Great Millstone, we go uh, go into a lot, you know. Um, I would like to hear these guys break down of Second Ezra, the 11th chapter, seeing how all these people apparently were um, Israelites. And uh, But one of the points that, that was made here was very strange. And for people who study the Bible even a little bit, it's shocking that this wasn't a point of, like, what? What are you saying? And so... Sometimes it's, it just bewilders me that, that, that people listen to this stuff. But I I'm just going to highlight one point. That's it. I'm not going to go all deep and stuff. Brothers are doing videos. But just check the logic of these people. And you really have to say, these are your leaders? These are the people you trust to tell you the truth. They're, the way that they process information is weird to me. But they want to treat everybody like they're, they're idiots. You know? Now, keep reading on. <laughs> Antipater's son, Herod, was about 26 years of age at this time, and his father made him governor of Galilee. In 43 BCE, Antipater was assassinated by a political rival. Let me, let me tell you something else, too. Keep reading, but you understand that the title of things, people, they don't even go watch the video, it's just the title. And you'll never see nobody prove that. But, you know, Israel is ingrained in, in lies, man. That's right. That's right. They don't want to, and let me tell you something. They don't want to separate. They want to continue. Let me tell you something. All this information that's been coming out, you thinking these guys, what about their camps? What about their school? Why are they continuing to still push lies? That's why I say if they come into the table, come to the table. Really? And what is he talking about? Like, what is he talking about? Who is listening to these people? What the hell did he just say? He just babbled. We literally just heard babbling. Okay? Basic, 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 basic information. Just because Esau, see, and this is the thing that what happens because we are trying to come out of the slave mindset and we've been traumatized by the so-called white man throughout these cap this captivity. And so kind of like our way of fighting back is you don't want to give Esau any credit for anything that he's done. And it's like, he didn't do that. He didn't touch us. No, Esau did. <laughs> The scripture says that Satan is a come down as an angel of light, man. But it's just it's basic history on Herod, man. Now, come on now. Herod. Herod was born in southern Palestine. His father, Antipater, was an Edomite, a Semitic people. Identified by some scholars as Arab who converted to Judaism in the 2nd century BC, Antipater was a man of great influence and wealth who increased both by marrying the daughter of a noble from Petra and at, the, at that time the capital of the rising Arab Netabian kingdom. Thus Herod was of Arab origin although he was a practicing Jew. Okay, and We know that the, the Edomites were in that, in that, in that region. And we know the prophecies concerning how Esau was going to be ruling. Esau is the, was the ruler of the Greek and Roman empires. 
They had a spreading, spreading factions everywhere. Esau had 12 sons, man, that spread all across the place. Okay. Goodness gracious, people. Sheesh. The Herodian, they were Edomites, man. Goodness gracious. Bro, and when we you, when you see the Ptolemaic Empire, did not the Ptolemaic Empire act like they were Egyptians? Hello? That's what they did. Antipater, Idumian, founder of the Heronian dynasty in Palestine. Antipater, he was Idumian, man. Grow up. Grow up. Rome, Herod appeared before the Senate and impressed the members with his abilities and loyalty to Rome. The Senate made Herod the king of Judea and authorized a Roman military expedition. Everybody that did great things in the world wasn't Jake. Okay. Alexander the, uh, Alexander the Greek, going hard. Killing, he winning like a hoe. He was not a Jake. He just was good at fighting. He was good at armies and battles and stuff, man. Okay? Grow up. You guys got to grow up, man. You have some of these Edomite generals and rulers, they were, they were very savvy in war. Go and study the British Empire, man. It was kicking ass. Legitimately kicking ass. It's okay, man. German scientists. They were coming up with some shit. Okay? You guys gotta just... Hey, bro. Esau did stuff. They were winning. But now they gonna lose. to establish Herod's rule in Judea. So, I know I put the video out last night showing you that those Roman soldiers was this nuts. You know, kicking. Bro, the Romans used every nation that they conquered and made them soldiers. They did that to everybody. Israel, the Israelites got conquered. They got put into the Roman. What consists of the current US military. It's a it's a melting pot of Jake mostly because we are the chief ones that they put in captivity, other nations and other people. Rome did that. They would come conquer you, take your little boys, raise them up, put them in the army. Very, very common. That does not mean that Herod Hell right, they didn't even come, the, the Herodians didn't even come up like that. <sighs> Duplicate anything now and make it seem like, but a lot of this stuff, information, it's hard to find. It's hard to find, but keep reading. Octavian became acquainted with Herod from his visit. The Roman expedition successfully established control of Judea. And made Herod its king by 37 BCE. Let me ask you this. At this time in Israel, do you think they would have an Edomite ruling over them? They would have torn them to pieces, man. All right. They weren't going for that, man. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Completely has no idea what he's talking about. All you have to do is read the book of Maccabees. During the, this is even before the Herodian rose up. This is what I'm talking about 173, 183 BCE. The Roman Empire's influence in the world had already grown to a massive point in the world to where did nobody want no smoke with Rome. They wouldn't have towed up Rome. The Maccabees ended up losing to the Greeks. 
We were very small, fought hard, preserved certain aspects of our culture, and then were assimilated into the Greco-Roman Empire over time, piece by piece by piece. This is, this is documented in the Bible. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You go here in 2 Maccabees, the fourth chapter, it just gives a small snippet of the type of things that were happening because of the influence of the, of the Greco-Roman Empire, specifically Greece. Now here in 2 Maccabees, the fourth chapter, and you skip on down to the seventh verse, it says, but after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be high priest. Promising the king by intercession 303 score talents of silver and of another revenue 80 talents. Besides this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have a license to set him up a place for exercise and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen and to write uh, them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. Which when the king had granted, and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to Greekish fashion. The royal privileges granted of, of special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Epolemus, who went ambassador to Rome for uh, uh, amity, uh, or ab amity and aid. He took away and putting down the government's which were according to the law, he brought up new customs against the law. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat. Now such was the height of Greek fashions, an increase of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, the ungodly rich and no high priest. That was just the beginning of all of these things that were happening to the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel has always been cons conspiring. When you go all the way back to the time of the splitting of the kingdom, um, you know, after King Solomon, there was pacts being made with the Egyptian Empire, with the Assyrian Empire, with, you know, Tyrese, I don't, with, with all the nations round about. They were creating leagues. They were making marriages. They were having foreign leaders come in and c c submitting themselves unto them, leading into the. What do you think the Persian Empire was? The Persian Empire was us subjugated to the Persians and allowed to keep our customs at a certain extent. Underneath the Persian Empire. What are you talking about, bro? I'm talking about, well, y'all think they were going to let the Romans? Bro, when you read in the New Testament, we go here in John, John 11 chapter, in the 47th verse. It says, Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doth many miracles. Talking about Yahweh. If we let him. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. That lets you know that the Romans gave them place, and they were under Roman subjugation. During the time when the Lord was on the scene, it was during the time of what's known as Pax Romana, right? This was the height of the Roman Empire. What Rome and even the Greeks before them would do is... They would rule. They would have certain Israelites mixed up in there, but they had the rulership overall. They would have a, you know, uh, maybe a, a Greek ruler in the place, but underneath them, they would set Jacob and stuff like that. Now, the history of the Herodians was documented. They were Idumeans. They were Edomites. Edomites. They were Edomites. There's nothing. You know, it's just true. We, we, have, we have to get over this. Okay. Now, he's saying that Jake wouldn't allow for somebody to rule. You crazy? Uh, St. John chapter 19, verse mm, 13. It says, when Pilate, therefore, heard the, that saying, he brought Yahweh forth and sat down 
in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, uh, Gabata. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, behold your king. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. That wasn't just started then. That started hundreds of years before that. Where they had the heathen ruling and they were subjugated underneath them. So when you have this person trying to tell you something opposite, it doesn't make sense. Only if somebody went for that is us. But you see it in the movies. It's another way, what I call imagery, deception. See, a lot of you got Christmas still stuck in your head. You're sitting in here in school today. Bring it out. Bring it out. Gracious, goodness gracious. Some of you still want to honor your birthday. Bring it out. So who gave you all these things? It was our people. Because they created Christmas. They created it. If the scripture said Esau is a vagabond, I mean he's a he's a he's a he's dumb as a box of rocks. You never see Esau do nothing. The television tell you he does these things, but when you at work with him, he 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 in the office, ain't he? Mm. Bring it out. Keep reading, man. No, nigga, you are at work. Esau ain't at work. Esau on the boat. Esau is at the cabin. Esau is at the lake. Esau is at the restaurant. Esau is chilling. The Edomites that you're talking about, them lower tier Edomites, that's not who is ruling the earth and this is so because you have an apartment mentality the bigger picture has gone over your head brother Genesis 3 and 1 says now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made and he said unto the woman yea after most I said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The whole point of this is that he was more subtle. Esau ain't no dummy. See, e the fact that you think Esau is a dummy means that he got you. <laughs> you look at this word. Arawam. In the Hebrew, prudent, crafty, Shrewd, sly, sensible. No, he's smart than all. Esau is crafty. Very crafty. It's just on the left hand side, man. You see, the spirit that's in Esau is the spirit of Satan, man. Very crafty. Very crafty. Knows what he's doing. Everything is a setup. Everything is a scam, a scheme. He knows how to get, you know, get his way in there. Esau ain't just no, you know, walking around. You no, know, man. Let's just, look. we have to grow up and understand the nature of kingdoms and the nature of peoples and the nature of how the Most High uses these peoples and everything like that to do his will, man. Esau is not just walking around. He know the truth. Esau know what the fuck is going on. Very crafty. I get it. You know, Israel definitely is the top. We are we, we, we a former of all things. We we come up in there and we make things better and we take things to a higher level. But that don't mean Esau's not crafty. That don't mean he, has, he hasn't had some sort of ingenious nature to do his things on the left-hand side. Julius Caesar was a great general. You read the stories about what he did. It was cool. It was dope. You know. And it was winning. He still is Edomite. 
Okay. Herod and his family, they were smashing uh, Israelite women, all that. Edomites. The Edomites ruled Rome, and they ruled the provinces of Rome. And Judea was one of those provinces that the Edomites ruled. Antipater was an Edomite. Okay, Pontius Pilate was an Edomite. Augustus and Tiberius Caesar were Edomites. They were all Edomites, straight up. This is true. They they made up that form of the beast. And that's why they were spoken in code that way. And you had our people that were in league with the Greco-Roman Empire so that they could keep committing uh, uh, the their they could have their status and, and not go to op, op, absolute war. And we read and we read about the first beginnings of that process when you read the Mac. The Maccabees. The Maccabees gives you a good highlight. But you know what? You have the same thing, you know, same things happening in previous empires, you know. The Edomites was ruling. And so the the, the the point that we would never have someone rule over us like that, are you crazy? We've been having people rule over us like that. We're now trying to come out of that and come into a sovereign mind. But we can't lose our minds to the reality of the situation. Okay? So I just wanted to touch on that. I just, certain things that are being said is just like, come on, man. Hey, take a deep breath. Drink some water. Calm down. Calm down. The Herodians were Edomites. And it's okay. We're going to win. We're going to get our lick back. It's a promise from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Okay? Call hello Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing words in Syria and truth. Shalom.